I will share. And I see a few familiar names, so this is great. Um, I know, um, I believe Christy and Rita, you were on the call or on the presentation last week. Um, and uh, Rochelle, um, Alicia, um, and Tracy. So um, yeah, it looks like we have a smaller group. So if anyone would like to, and, and I'll um, ask you as we go, but if you would like to you know, interject a thought, a comment, an idea, please, please do. Um, so I will get started. Um, I'm gonna try to wrap things up by a little bit after seven so that there's time for a discussion. Um, so that that's the plan and I last time I stuck to it. So we'll see. So let me get my presentation open here. Just give me one second. Oh, sorry, Melinda, it says um, the host disabled screen share. <laughs> Does that all the time? <laughs> all right, you should be okay. good. Now. Yep, I'm good. Okay. Okay, so tonight um, we're going to be talking about photo and video tips. And um, the I would say 25% of it is focused on video and the majority is on photo. And that's because I think um, I just I see so much go wrong with photos on social media. And um, a lot of the strategies that, that we'll, we'll talk about photos actually apply to video as well. So um, that's kind of the way things are going to progress. And a lot of this is um, based on theories and uh, sort of concepts in uh, design, but I've tried to make it so that it's ready to use and it's not um, it's not just textbook. It's something that you can take, learn, um, you know, maybe even do a little more research into it and then use and hit the ground running. So what will you gain tonight? Hopefully some ideas for what to take uh, photos and videos of, uh, the basics, so just basics of photography and video, some quick tips and tricks, and um, some time on photography. How many folks are involved with food? Um, if you want to just put it in the chat, I want to make sure that I don't go too hard into food if we don't have a lot of folks um, involved in that. trying to look for my chat box it says the chat's disabled right now oh okay um all right then we'll go back all right um but anyway right, so we'll, it now it's corrected okay. sorry about that. okay no worries um but yeah we'll we'll spend some time on um some food photography basics so um you know the, the first thought is well what do i take photos and videos of so um I would say it's remarkable things. And I mean that, um, I, I, I wanna break the word remarkable down into the word remark. So something that's worthy of remark. So if you were with me on last week's uh, presentation, try not to chime in too much here. Um, actually you can chime in here, this, this part, but not the second part. Um, so the first question I would have is what is there to remark on in this uh, image of, cows. You can just put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself, whatever you prefer. Melinda, you've seen this so many times. <laughs> anything that, anything to remark on? Do you, anything you notice? Lots of cows. <laughs> yeah, cows that need to be milked. Oh, we've got We've got a chat here, black and white. Yep, Holsteins, these are Holstein cows. Um, I've, people have noticed some crazy things like the, the cows are all looking at this little rabbit in the left-hand corner. Um, there's a little, little boy over in the upper right-hand corner. Yes, a new little baby cow. Um, it's funny, the farmers always say the cows really need to be milked. <laughs> so. Anyway, no, nothing, we're all saying different things. I'm sure you're trying to look for something. And then now I would ask you um, to tell me what, what you see. And I'm sure you're all like a uh, purple cow. I see a purple cow. So that's the point. You don't have to think about it. It's not something that um, you're mulling over or you're trying to search for something worthy to remark about. It's truly remarkable. It's a simple, 
it's simple. Um, you don't even think about it. It's purple cow. And that's what we want to think about when we think about what we're going to post on social media. Um, photos, videos, it all should be remarkable. And that doesn't mean it needs to be Academy Award winning. It just needs to be something that elicits a, um, a response. So again, quick look at this. Um, and this is this is what you see when you scroll through your, your newsfeed. And again, that purple cow image just kind of stops you in your tracks. So another trick you can use is before you post a video or photo, you can ask yourself, would I show someone this in, or tell them about this in real life? And if not, then you might want to think twice about posting it. So I always think, is it entertaining? Does it give you an emotional experience? Is it funny? Is it beautiful? Does it make you sad? Does it make you mad? Does it engage you and entertain you? And the other thing is, does it inform you? So does it give you... Um, a trick, a tip, something useful. So those are kind of the two holy grails that I think of when I think of what will I post. I need to move the chat box. Hold on one sec. Okay. Um, so kind of a test is, what would you say? It's so beautiful. It's so interesting. So it should be, again, like the purple cow, something quick, and something that sticks out, that's unique, that jumps out at you, and that is worthy of a remark. So does it tell a story on its own, or is it a visual element to a longer form story? And we talked about emotions or reactions. What what are you trying to elicit? Um, and again, is it something useful or informative? I, I, I always get uh, sucked into the hack videos, kitchen hacks, and um, those videos on uh, Facebook and Instagram reels always suck me in, so. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of dive right into reels. So we, the, the title of the presentation is, you know, get real, so we're talking about reels. And what are reels? Um, Actually, I'm going to skip ahead here. So what are reels? Um, they are vertical. Hold on, just, they're vertical videos. That really defines them. Um, and they are found on Facebook and Instagram. They are based off of TikTok video. Um, so when I talk about reels, if you are on TikTok and you're using TikTok, then just pretend I'm saying TikTok. But um Really, they're one in the same in the sense that they follow the same format, they have the same style. But you're probably wondering, well, why aren't you talking about TikTok video? So I'm actually going to just go back to this. Um, this is was a study um, done in late um, late uh, 2022 of, of is using what um, social networks. And as you can see here, Facebook is double the users of TikTok and Instagram is, is ahead as well. And um, I'm sure you've been following the news with TikTok being there's TikTok bans possibly. I don't think it's going to come back, but I do worry that TikTok is going to kind of phase out. And what's going to be left in its wake are reels. And reels are the TikTok format of a vertical video based on pop culture and trends but it lives on Facebook and Instagram. It's a meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram meta. It's a meta um, construct. So reels are um, a format that you can find on Facebook and Instagram that mimic TikTok. So does anyone have questions about that? Um, because TikTok is very trendy. Um, I didn't include this graphic in this uh, presentation, but I like to show it of all the social media platforms of years past, you know, Foursquare and MySpace, and they've, they've really kind of died off. And I do wonder if that's going to happen to TikTok. So I just caution you to be careful of, of only using TikTok. There's a comment in the chat how interesting they did not include YouTube. Shorts are the same format. Yes. So YouTube shorts. Yeah. Yeah. I would say YouTube. YouTube probably would fall right, um, I would say, between Facebook and Instagram. But, um, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly, um, if, if it's Alicia. Um, uh, YouTube shorts are also the same format. So you can intersperse reels. When I'm talking about reels, it could be 
TikTok, it could be um, a TikTok video, it could be a reel, it could be a YouTube short. So it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> um, it's it's all a vertical video that's kind of based on pop culture. And it's I'm guessing by the questions that um, that Aaron and Alicia asked that um, they're familiar with uh, the format. But if you have any questions about format, let me know. We can uh, pause. So this one was um, going back to kind of what are they? Um, reels are based on that it's true pop culture. It's um, it's kind of I like to say like a meme that's come to life. So um, it's it's fun. It's it's a lot of laughter. A lot of I don't know. I we just moved a year ago, and I keep getting reels that show me I, I have house envy. All these perfect houses. It's really annoying. <laughs> Uh, so I see a lot of those reels, um, but for the most part, I would say they're just informal, fun, and casual. Um, there's a lot of mashups. Um, they're based on trends. It's very much trend driven. And um, this one spoke to me because I have a, a toddler, and uh, you know, whenever I take him anywhere, and I'm like, "Don't touch anything." Like the doctor's office, he puts his hands on everything. So this was a mashup of um, a, I think, an '80s freestyle dance video um, and it you know starts off saying that whenever we're in a public restroom I tell my toddler not to touch anything and then the video cuts in and it's someone rolling all over the floor doing you know dramatic moves and touching every part of the floor. so anyway that spoke to me and uh, and that's the other thing reels TikTok videos YouTube are custom um, based on what they they know how long you're staying on a particular video and they'll start showing you more of that or if you like or comment it's going to show you more of that so that's why this one came up for me um another important thing when you're thinking about reels or any video today is that you want to have subtitles now if you're making the video right in um reels the reels maker or right in TikTok or youtube shorts and there's audio that you have recorded it will automatically or you can you know let, let that platform know to generate them. But you can also just create subtitles right in your video as well. So you can do it yourself or um, you know have it created for you. Because a lot of times these videos are viewed without sound, um, whether it's someone at a doctor's office in the waiting room at night and your partner's sleeping um, and you're trying to just, or you're, you're scrolling and looking at reels, a lot of times they are not the sound and so they should stand alone in that way. So I've talked a little bit about trends with reels. Um, this one is all over TikTok and, and um, reels and it's, um, you know, you, it's based on the Wes Anderson uh, movie style, which I can only describe as kind of a hipster <laughs> minimalist style. I mean, uh, um, the Royal Tenenbaums is a Wes Anderson movie. And so the latest theme is, you know, you better not pretend you're in a Wes Anderson movie while doing this. Um, so again, this presentation was kind of geared towards um, farm, farm and food businesses. So it might be something like you could record yourself if you're uh, working in your uh, in a barn saying, you know, um, you better not make this look like you're in a Wes Anderson movie. So you would stand very still and you would carefully lay out the equipment you would use and keep a very straight face while you do it. So this is a trend and it'll be gone in two weeks, um, guaranteed. And so uh, you can just look at what's trending on any of the platforms, but you can also do a little cheat and go to knowyourmeme.com and they'll tell you what's trending and right there. But one thing I want to say here is that even making a video that looks that, that to create a, a video based on this trend would take some time and planning, hours of time and planning, I would say, because I was watching a few of them. And even the simplest ones to make it look good would take a couple hours. And you're probably thinking, well, I don't have that time for something that's only going to have a shelf life in a few weeks. And it's, and you're right. Um, I have been finding that you're still gonna get some good mileage for your business or organization by just creating a very simple vertical video. You don't have to go this in depth and follow the trends this much to get some impact. 
Um, that being said, if you feel like one of these have a couple hours and you do want to kind of jump on a bandwagon, then go for it. And some of them are a lot easier. Like the one that I just showed you, the mashup, um, you could do something simple like that. Um, again, uh, thinking of something like you could say me whenever I go to the farmer's market and then cut to a clip of someone, you know, maybe it's actually a toddler that just goes and like grabs a bunch of food and throws it in a, in a bag. Um, so you can do mashups and those are like here, uh, but sometimes it is fun, even if it's going to take a little time to jump. Around. But I just want to mention here that ultimately just make a reel. It doesn't need to be mind blowingly perfect. It's just using that vertical format to create a video is really important. Even if you have some videos that have been shot in the landscape, uh, you know, more traditional mode, you can still upload that as a reel. There'll be black space on the top and bottom. In fact, the mashup I showed you, see right here, um, you can see right here that the um, the guys, it's a it's a horizontal. And there's black on the top and the bottom, and so you can. Um, you know, you can repurpose something that you've already done and just make it, 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 it will automatically so that it's critical. And you have a, a question in the chat, Lindsay, can you talk about reels versus stories? Unless you're going to yep. get in. So <laughs> stories are more um, temporary, um, whereas reels are going to be something, um, okay, there's a couple of things here. Reels are more, uh, they have more shelf life. They are, uh, and the reason they're getting more views than stories or posts right now is because Instagram, if Instagram and Facebook want to take over your feed with reels, they want reels to be the next big thing. They believe in video. They believe in virtual reality. Meta, the company does. And ultimately virtual reality relies on video. So they are, they are driving views of reels more than um, stories or posts. So that is why they're doing it because that's where they see the future going and they want to take over TikTok. They, TikTok is the bane of their existence. So they want um, to make TikTok go away and do that by getting you watch reels, excuse me, and not TikTok, not TikTok videos. So that is why. And stories, stories are typically more um, like a static image that you then piece together. You can and they're not meant to last. So I, and they're fine. I, I just run reels because they are getting more views. But I will say posts, like a regular post, this is confusing, but you can make a reel be a regular post, meaning it will show up in um, people's news feed. So in feeds on Instagram. So I would still urge you to do reels um, as opposed to stories. But posts, as we'll get into with the photography is still, it's still very relevant. So any other questions before we go on? Okay, so we talked about that. Yes, yep, I, I, reels are getting way more, um, more eyes on them than ever before. So you're, 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 um, and people are, yeah, came all over the world. That That's great that it happened, but, um, yeah, reels right now, the algorithms are, they're just like everything else are kind of a mystery, but I don't know about you, but if you're looking through your reels, you're going to see something popular, 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 and then a random local video. And that's where we want all of your videos to start showing up because they want to start getting more local videos being viewed. Um, so some quick ideas. And again, I've prepared this for those um, that are in um, you know, in, in for farm and food. And this was something I put together actually for um, farmers market managers. But this, these were some ideas. Um, a, a very popular trend on Reels and TikTok is do this with me. And it kind of takes people on a journey with you. So it could be something like order seeds um, for, well, this is a little late now, but in February, it could have been order seeds for the upcoming season. And you would literally flip through, you would speed it up, um, but you could flip catalog and show people um, the seeds that you were going to order. 
So things like prepare, store what I found at the market with me. Um, you can also do something interactive and ask shoppers, you know, what's your favorite thing at the market? Or um, you're mentioning that you have a bakery. So you could ask customers that come in and you know, tell them that they'll be in a video, but just say, hey, would you mind telling me what your favorite, um, you know, pastry is that we have, or what's your favorite type of bread that we offer? And then put those all together in a and I think what I, I would like to do is that, um, you know, if anyone has any ideas for reels that have worked or, or TikTok videos or YouTube shorts, whatever you want to call it, but a video that's worked for them that they had success with, feel free to put it in the chat or just jump in and um, share it with the group. Because I'm going to grab some water. There is a uh, one comment about um, doing a reel. Uh, for her bakery, but it came from all over the world. Yeah. And I know that's unfortunate, but they want, it, it's good that you had those views and it's, but it's, it's good for the platform, but not so much for you. So they kind of profited off you in a way, like your video must've been very compelling and your views, it was viewed a lot, but again, it wasn't local. And so that's where I would say they're in, pro when I say they, meta, YouTube, TikTok, they're in the process of trying to find a way to kind of capitalize on local viewers. And it's not really, I don't think it's there yet, but like I said, you want to be that reel that shows up when people are looking at those um, more influencer created videos. I do have a quick question, Lindsay, um, yes. which is, you know, we do a lot for our, the markets, paid Facebook, Instagram posts, uh, yep. are there paid reels? Is that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Are you, you getting into that? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't get in. I actually don't get into that. I, I, we're going to start talking about photography and kind of like the, the thought behind that, but yes, you can boost a reel. You can pay to have it shown. You can target it just like um, any other mm -hmm. post. So that's a great question. Yeah, that could be a way to target more local by having yep. that targeted audience when you do your paid advertisement. And because it's newer, you're just not getting as many businesses jumping on the bandwagon as you would think. So just by being on this call, you're kind of ahead of the game. Um, so I would just say, again, you don't need to overthink it. Um, again, since I only know the, the bakery uh, example for now, uh, you know, just showing, taking, say, here's a quick morning tour before the customers come in and just take folks around your bakery and show them what you're up to in the morning. Or this is what I do every day. It doesn't need to be in depth. It could be um, uh, just quick cuts, even photos that you put together. Um, oh, we have something, let's see. Someone has a video. Alicia, what is your business? Just so we can, um, she shared a uh, reel that did well. Erin asked, what is the ideal timeline for a reel? I would say it really depends on the content. Oh, handcrafted jewelry. Cool. Um, it really depends on what you're doing. So if you were doing that Wes Anderson one, those are about 45 seconds to a minute. Um, sometimes just if you're promoting an event, you could do one that's like 10 to 15 seconds. Um, so they, there's really not an ideal time. It, it depends on what you're trying to do. I've seen reels that are just really, they're almost like, um, they're, they're almost like a still photo, but, um, you know, one element or two elements will, yeah, Aaron's right. They definitely vary. Some are like three minutes and they're full on video. So. Um, I would say if you want to keep it under a minute, that would be good. Unless you are trying to do something that, um, yeah, 10 seconds or less is, is what Instagram likes. Yeah. Um, viewership tends to drop off after about eight, seven to eight seconds, um, in any video, unless it's like the really, really compelling. So again, if you're trying to promote an event or product, probably want to get that important info out right away, or you really want to hook someone in to stick on, to, to stay on and watch your video. Yeah, it's sad. Seven to eight seconds is the, the length of our attention span. So yeah, that's, that's what it is. 
If you're posting a regular video, actually on Instagram, it has to be under a minute. So uh, keep that in mind too. So here's some equipment. Um, and this is if you do want to just kind of go a little bit more on the professional side. And then I, I just use my smartphone when I'm doing work for clients. And, and honestly, that's probably going to be best. Now, if you're doing a lot of stuff outside, I know you're all wondering, like, what is a dead cat? <laughs> Um, a dead cat is just a little, it's like a, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like a duster material, um, but it goes right over the lavalier mic that you can see. So when it's windy, it's going to muffle wind. Um, so that's why I called a dead cat. But anyway, these are like average prices of equipment that you could this if you want to. Um, the gimbal is very interesting. That's that's if you really plan on doing a lot of videos where you'll be moving. So um, if you, uh, the person in the bakery, like if you're moving around, you want to show people what you're doing, then you would definitely want to uh, invest in this. Otherwise, people are going to get car sick. Um, I, I found sometimes if you just stick your, your arm out and just really try to be steady, it, it's passable. Um, but uh, the gimbal is a uh, three axis gimbal will make sure you, you can hold it and it will um, steady. It will steady any movement and it will do it automatically. You can get like a cheap manual one for about $40. But if you want to have a nice steady look, you want to get one of these and it attaches to your um, smartphone. So uh, a lavalier mic is just something, again, if you're in a place like it, uh, for Alicia that makes jewelry, I don't know if there's any machinery that would be running that would be hard if you want to show someone something and talk over it. And the lavalier will help you or, or kind of at least muffle those background noises. And again, the dead cat will help even more. And then a ring light. This one's one that attaches to your phone, but if you're going to do a lot of things just stationary, you can get a ring light that would just overhang um, on your monitor, let's say. So if you're doing it for, um, for a laptop, like right behind. And so these are just some kind of a pieces of equipment. But again, you don't really need any of that um, if you just want to do a basic video. I'm sorry, I just sneeze. <laughs> we have a cold going around our house, so. Um, so that's kind of an overview of reels. Um, and then we're going to get right into photography. So any questions or, or I, I know everyone had some comments uh, or questions already, but anything else? It's the wild west right now. It's just like artificial intelligence. It's so new. The video format has obviously been around for a while, but reels are just, it's, it's changing every day. Um, TikTok videos, reels, whatever you want to call those vertical videos, but that it's just changing rapidly. So my best advice would be to just be careful to not um, put all your eggs in, in that one basket of just focusing on reels, because I think there's still a place for static posts. And um, what we're going to talk about now, again, a lot of it's going to apply to taking video. So um yeah, um, artificial intelligence is, it's very crazy. Right now, actually, if you wanted to, you could go right on um, chat GBT, it's called, and say, um, give me a one minute, or a, the script for a one minute video of um, how to, um, uh, or an, an idea for a one minute video for my jewelry business. And of course, you'd want to put prompts, but it's really crazy what you can do. Um, so that's going to change everything. So, okay. So photography basics. And again, I'll, I'll mention as we go through this and I'm going to try to pick up the pace because I'm a little behind. I'm only a third of the way through and I promise we'd be done by seven. It might be 7.05. <clears throat> okay. So, um, there's seven elements of photography. So technically there's, you know, I'm not going to go through them all, but these are kind of the four pieces that I think are the most important. And again, this works for video. So the thing that is most important is what is your purpose? Why are you, why are you taking a video or why are you taking a photo? And this is just an example of a, uh, a farm, let's say that, um, 
you know, just made, or just made, <laughs> just harvested patty pan squash. So they want to promote it. They have a truck full, let's say. So how are they going to do it? So what is the subject? What is the subject of your video? What is the subject of your photo? Um, and it's a squash beauty shot. Um, what is the composition? So are you going to have your face in the photo? Are you going to, um, are you going to do it where you're, you, you know, are you going to set the squash on the counter and back away and, and, do it like that. Um, in this instance, we're going to do a flat lay, so it's an overhead. And then style. What do you? What do you? Are you going to do some um, vignette? A vignette just means that it's either white or black around the edges. Um, so that might give it more of drama. In this case, we're just going to do very modern and bold, and we position the um, patty pan squash in a way that looks like gears, and we. Um, you know, so our style is very direct and industrial. So with this, um, you know, the, the play on words where we're gearing up for the market today and the squash looks like gears. So we're trying to kind of have a um, story here just in the photo itself. A quick tip to high contrast, again, in video or photography, high contrast, touch the eye. And going back to that purple cow example, that's really important because we've only got those seven or eight seconds of video to keep people engaged. And you really, before you get them to watch your video, they have to stop and open your reel or, op or look at your photo. Um, and that, a quick way to do that is high contrast. So having something dark and light in your photo or video. So an important thing too is when we talked about the kind of basics of photography or video is your purpose. And ultimately we're all on this call because we're trying to accomplish something. We're trying to either promote our organization or sell a product. So it's really tricky because people can see right through that. So you can't, that can't be your purpose all the time. Um, a direct, that's, that's like a direct sale. And this would be an example of that. You don't want to do that. People can see right through that and um, you're, they're not going to click on your, your photo or video. So um, promotional photos just it, or videos just don't go well, uh, over well. I'm, I'm sure we all um, can agree that we bypass those pretty quickly. And remember, it's that remarkable test. Are you entertaining or informing someone? Let me move this over here. So I'm going to skip this because I, it sounds like we have people that are in multiple different, um, you know, selling different things. So I don't want to kind of go into granular on this. Let me move. So in photography and video, so the subject, how do you define it? It's typically going to be what's in focus. Melinda, I know you've seen this photo a million times, but um, this is in, and you can play with this because typically we were promoting the market here as a whole, but as you can see, that's actually um, blurred out. So we've shifted it and put the strawberries in focus as a way to kind of sell the experience. So you can use um, focus as a way to um, define your subject. And I think we're all familiar with portrait mode on, um, you know, on your phone, you just simply tap what you want to be in focus and play around with that. Don't always go with the most obvious thing. Um, another thing, and again, this works for video too, um, macro photography. So that's, that's an unexpected kind of purple cow strategy is everything's usually um, a couple feet away from the subject, but zoom in on your subject, especially um, for our jewelry maker, you know, that, or, or the baker, that would be really interesting to start your video or show a photo um, that's really up, up close. And that's called macro photography. Um, and it's a way to really um, show people details that they wouldn't ordinarily see. And phones today, just your average iPhone or Android phone, um, Samsung Galaxy, you can do beautiful up close photography. This is really important. 
So if you're going to take video or photo in a, in a public setting, you always want to ask permission before you do it. Um, these groups are all small enough and you're close enough where you can identify people. So if someone said they weren't comfortable, I would not have taken this photo. And I just asked, I said, hey, I, I'm working on some social media posts. Can I take your photos? And most people are fine with it, but you want to be very careful um, and ask permission. Um, so this is really important too, uh, especially with video, starting with a um, your face or someone's face as the first frame in your video or thinking of ways to get more faces in your photos. And this is just, it's um, kind of how we're all wired from birth. Um, the first thing that, that babies do is try to make out a face um, when they, it's, it's just part of human nature and we're drawn to that human face. So anytime that you start a video with your face or someone else's face as the main subject, you're going to get those views. You're going to get people to click on your reel. You're going to get people to read your post. Really important. It also makes a lot of people uncomfortable if they're introverted, introvert, but it is very. So now we're getting into some of those rules that people don't think about, but they can really take your photos and videos to the next level. Um, and that is the rule of thirds. And that is, this isn't something I came up with. It's just a thing in photography. Um, and a, kind of the rule of thirds is to, to place subjects on the points where they intersect, um, along the lines or within columns or rows. So you want to kind of, this is how you compose a photo. And I'll show you this in, in action. So in, in the English language, we mean, um, Yeah, uh, Alicia mentioned you can use a still photo with a face and text with the cover on Reels. You can do that, but lately they've been um, showing you three, I think it's two to three seconds of a video to try and entice you to click on it. So you can do that, but now they're really, they're trying to um, entice people to open your Reel by showing the first two to three seconds. So you would still want to have your video start with a face and keep the face there for two to three seconds. Um, so this is, this would also apply to reels. Um, stretch out this, this graph here and think of it, as, um, uh, you know, transposed onto the size of your phone. And so we've, you know, in English read left to right and from top to bottom. So the bottom right, for some reason, is always the most noticed. Um, and you'll see this next, now that I've said it, you'll, I, you'll, I guarantee you, you'll see it. Um, it's something you don't think about, but that is where your eye goes. Um, and this has been, I used to do a lot of uh, uh, research for menu engineers and menu engineering. They use that same principle, but a lot of their high value items would go right. So just, it's, it's a weird, again, human psychology thing. Another thing that you can do, and again, this is for um, markets, but it can work for anything, is to divide, um, you know, divide things horizontally. So keep different things, um, different components of an image kind of in those, in that, in those thirds. So in the top, we've got the tents. In the middle, we have the people. In the bottom, we have the flowers. So it looks composed. Another thing that you can do too is mess around with foreground and background. So what is in your foreground? Um, I looked so creepy. I was outside of the Sullivan County government. And I was like hiding behind these, this, um, pot of flowers and I looked crazy. People were wondering what I was doing, but I think it was a unique shot of a farmer's market that you don't usually see. So um, thinking about kind of how you move in a video as well, what can you start out with in the foreground and then how can you move uh, move around within that video to, to give new perspectives and take people with you. A lot of, a lot of this is taking people on a journey with you. So another thing when you're taking photos or taking video, 
it's okay to back up and give some space. So in this photo, the bottom third is the only part that has the market. The upper two thirds are sky and trees. And that's okay because you are giving breathing room. And a lot of times I see with videos and photos that it's almost like people are just too squished, too tight, and you can't really, you feel, it's kind of like when someone's a close talker, you feel uncomfortable. It's the same feeling. You can't really focus on what they're saying because you just feel uncomfortable. They're too close. So I would always say back up. When in doubt, back up a little bit. And um, with photos, be don't be afraid to show some sky, some trees. If you're indoors, show some of the wall or the background, even if it's blurred out, just to give some feedback. And this is an example too, if you can kind of break, you don't have to always follow the rule of thirds, um, like to a T, you can mess around um, and kind of do your own thing. So this one is um, kind of a central composition where the center point is, is right in the middle square. Um, so it's just a different way. So if anyone's taking portraits, um, another kind of um, application of the rule of thirds is to put um, your eyes right on the, um, the top two intersection points. So that's kind of a standard trick with portraits. That's my dad and I. <laughs> um, scale is, again, I... I um, I think anything unexpected and trying to be that purple cow is important. So uh, kind of stepping back and seeing the whole picture. So in this case, we're in the bottom right hand corner. And no, I did, I did not think about that when I took the photo, but um, this shows the, the state of Michigan. So it's giving you that big picture look. And, and scale I always think is underutilized. People like, like I said, they just, everything's too tight step back at the whole picture and give people those bigger shots. And I think that's a way to stand out. Another thing is with photos, especially, but video as well, is just being creative and thinking of your products in different ways that you can show them. So out of the norm, um, something different. This I talked a lot about in my last presentation about branding. And, and your style. And I think that if you have a few colors or you have a look, a certain filter you always use on Instagram, a certain background, if you make videos, they always start your videos with um, you standing in front of a certain background. But see, anything that that is um, the same in your videos, you're going to get tired of. But your viewers and your audience is just going to start a start learning who you are because you want to stick out like the purple cow, but you want to be your own purple cow. You want your own look and feel. So um, for the bakery, it might, you know, you have your logo and there's two colors in your logo. You always want to use those, or not always, but 90% of the time, integrate those colors into your um, videos and photos. The other thing too with style is always using a specific font. So when you do those text overlays, always using the same, you wanna create like a personality through the visuals and don't veer away from them. Because the whole point of this is that when people are scrolling through the news feed, scrolling through the reels, you're, they're gonna know it's you and your business right away. And then hopefully they're gonna click on it. So I know Erin, you're with, Cornell, so I would say you're going to get tired of it. But use that Cornell red as much as you can. Use, you know, if you if you're going to be on screen, someone from Cornell is going to be on screen. Always have them wear their red polo shirt. Or I know you guys have pretty cool fancy stuff, Melinda. What you have your like the fleece on, or you guys have awesome stuff. But try and always wear Cornell cool red flannel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Erin, it's great that you're always having the red in your content because I do see a lot of Cornell organizations or uh, Cornell cooperative organizations that will use like pink and blue and be all over the place. And, and it's okay to veer away once in a while, but you want to, in general, stick with your brand's colors. So um, another brand I work with is blue and green and yellow, and we'll veer away from that, but like we try to keep coming back because that's what people are used to. We use the same couple fonts. 
So it's, it's really important. And next week when we do the Canva demo, when we actually make a video, you can set up, um, you can set up your font, your colors and everything right there in, so that it's something that's automatic. A lot of the style of photo in, in uh, photos and videos is also the personality. So what is your tone? Are you serious? Are you funny? Are you warm? Are you um, trying to be a little aloof? You know, what is, what is your style? And to keep it consistent because um, brands are just like personalities and we like, or, or, or yeah, personalities and people. And, and we like that are consistent and predictable. So you don't want to um, kind of try on too many different styles. You want to stick with one. Another thing you can do with the photos you take is do text overlays. Um, so that's another, that's kind of starting to phase out and the algorithms I would say are not loving if you have a lot of um, text in your images. Um, so trying to use real photos whenever you can. But if you do, um, you know, if you do kind of want to play around with text on your photos, again, just use, make sure you use the brand that you've created. So use the same font and stick with that in the same style. Um, we'll get into this, um, but how to actually create these graphics and videos. Um, Adobe Spark is one that Canva's the best by far. So some quick tips and tricks. Let me just check where we are on time. Okay, I think we're good. So um, for anyone at the bakery, uh, I know that you are in the food business, but actually this would really apply. It's especially important for food, but any product outside lighting is just gonna be by far superior to anything. Unless you have a full studio set up, take your product. If you're doing a product shot, take it outside. And these are just some cute baby cucumbers. Like they look terrible inside. And this, this was with um, overhead lighting, side lighting, and it's still, they look, they look gross. And then all I did was just take them outside and they just look more vibrant and appealing. Yeah, Rochelle said that she always takes product shots outside. Yeah, this is a must. If you take one thing away, it's take it outside. Um, it's really important. And consider your background too, even if you blur it. Um, best time of day tips. There's always the golden hour is always great. Actually, cloudy days are preferable for um, products. Um, people are going to look better at the golden hour, which is when the sun is low in the sky. Or um, everyone talks about the evening golden hour, but the morning golden hour is just as good, but people aren't usually up around that time. And that's just when the sun is, um, or at least in the summer, um, that's when the sun is just coming up. Oh, I hate this. I, I meant to edit this out because this was during COVID and I uh, did my do-it-yourself hair dye. <laughs> but anyway, my point here um, is, um, you know, when you take when you take a simple selfie or if you're doing video, um, you always want to, if you can, have side light from either go up, going outside is good, but side light is going to be flattering. And that's natural light is going to be the best. So if you can go to a window and uh, next to a window, that's going to give you the best lighting, the most flattering, the softest, the most natural. Um, always be aware of taking video or photo when the, the light source is behind you because you're going to just be washed out. And then the direct light's harsh. You're going to show every line and shadow. So those are just some uh, tips there, my expense. <laughs> Um, another simple thing too, um, also uh, you get to look at my unflattering photo here, but um, angling your phone up or directly on you is going to not be flattering or any of your subjects, um, you know, people that you're taking photos of. You always want to be up slightly above your subject and slightly looking down at them, whether it's you or anyone else. Otherwise, you're going to add an extra, um, you know, you're going to add extra just weight to the face, you're also going to create more shadows than, than you need to. So that's just a, another tip for selfies. Also beware because, and, and the reason selfies for photos or videos, 
You also want to keep your arm out of, unless it's obvious that and it is part of your um, your your story, like you're saying, let's go shop the market or let's go take a tour of the bakery or uh, walk around with me. And then it doesn't matter if you can see your arm. But if you're trying to take a, a shot, make sure that the arm is out of the the picture because it just ruins everything. And it looks obvious that it's a selfie or that you did it yourself and it, it just doesn't look good. <laughs> so crop it out. Um, the other thing that I like to do too, especially now that um, most people on Instagram are, you just don't post every single day. You're, things are more curated and careful. Um, so this is just an example of a photo that I took. And then I just spent some time. I use Google Photos to mess around with my photos and get them the way I like. Uh, but you can do it right in Facebook and Instagram now. Um, but you can just, and, and, and really just play around until it looks better. But I just messed around with a couple of things and created this photo on the right that just looks more compelling. And these are just some examples of things that you can do. And it really, I'm not going to get into all the, just play around, just go in, open your photo in Google Photos. It's free. And um, again, you can do this right probably on your iPhone, but mess around with these things until your photo comes to life. And you'll know, you'll know as you do it, as if you look at, let's say the, um, the, uh, let me look at this, the colors, you can bump up the colors. So the brightness and the saturation, just bumping them. Oh, Rochelle said, thanks so much. I need to run. Um, have a great night. Thank you for joining us. Um, but these are just some examples of how you can improve the photo and kind of make it come to life. So food photography. So I'm sorry if you don't have food, but some of these, are, um, or if you don't have food to promote, but some of these will apply to regular products. Um, so I, anything that's arranged in, in a rainbow is always going to be kind of that purple cow. It just sticks out when there's a lot of vibrant colors. And I'm going to kind of speed through this because I want to, I want to have some time to discuss this is if anyone I hope someone on the call is uh um you know promote or works for a restaurant because I see this so often uh, meat is really a dangerous thing to photograph if you don't know what you're doing um, because it tends to look blue and um, you also don't want to blur meat because it looks like you're trying to hide something um light backgrounds are never good for meat don't do it um and meat also will look shiny so there's some some quick tips here um if you are going to blur make sure you see at least half of or, or see um, a third of the meat so that you can see that it's high quality make sure you trim a lot of the fat out off so that it doesn't look you know opaque um set the meat on skillet or wood dark backgrounds add some greenery and you want to make sure it's either slightly cooked or raw. And then you can play with the tint and make sure that you turn the blue way down. It just does not look appealing. Um, flat lays are a great way to photograph meat. And um, this is frozen meat, so it's different. Flat lay uh, photos are always a lot of fun and still very popular. This is really popular a couple of years ago, but it's still, I would argue, one of the most popular ways to um, showcase food. Pay attention to, um, to what you surround the food that you're photographing with. So putting a certain color napkin or including utensils can really make a um, dish come to life. And greenery is always, always a good thing because it, it signifies freshness. So even um, as a bakery, sometimes, it, especially to say, if it's a savory item or bread, finding a way to integrate some fresh herbs and greens. And kind of, oh, uh, one thing that I really um, want to emphasize is when we're working in digital photography and digital video, we can take advantage of the full um, spectrum, the digital spectrum. So when things are printed on paper, it uses CMYK. When we're in the virtual digital world, we can use RGB. And what that means is we can use neon 
colors and really stick out um, and things that you can't print on paper, but you can the colors you can't print on paper, but colors that you can use in a digital world. So kind of playing around with that and thinking, how can you use colors in a way that really stick out? And I'm gonna actually skip ahead since it sounds like we have a mixture of people here. I don't wanna do too much on, let's see. One, I, there's some stuff I wanna, I can't emphasize this enough if you're photographing people to always get permission. So I did want to go uh, here. Melinda, were you going to say something? I was going to say it, uh, just with market stuff, um, I always find, um, which can be challenging, is getting good shots of people shopping in action. You make it look very easy. <laughs> I know you went over the other tips, but any, I don't know. Yeah, that's a great, okay. That's, that's good. Um, so... I look like a creeper. I think I mentioned that earlier. If you are at a, in a public setting, you have to just kind of be embarrassed because you do have, you know, let people know, hey, I'm trying to get a photo. Pretend I, I always say, pretend I'm not here. Just do what you're doing. That's what I said to this group of people. I said, just pretend I'm not here. And then I literally went behind these radishes and just kind of waited. And I took about 50 shots. And this was the one that looked, the best. Um, so that's the other thing is take a bunch of photos and a bunch of video. The worst that you can do is, you know, just or, or the worst that'll happen is you use a lot of storage and just delete it later. But capture as much as you can. Don't worry about looking at it until you get home or get to wherever you are that you're going to work on your video or your post. So I would say capture as much as you can and always tell people that, you know, just pretend I'm not here. Tell them what you that you're going to take a photo or a video, but just say, hey, pretend I'm not here. And most people will do just that. They won't look at you. You have to remind some people. But that, as you can see, this woman was, um, I, she was really, that was actually her gen. I remember her. She was really excited and having a great time. And so again, this was one of probably like a dozen photos. And it still looks a little staged, but, um, you know, they're both genuinely happy and having fun. So, um, you know, again, take as many photos as you can and take as much video as you can. You're only going to use probably five to 10% of it, but you want to, it's just, you got to go through a lot of bad stuff to get the good stuff. It's just how life works. Um, but yeah, just take snap, 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 snap the photos and then edit them later. Also, you can see that I am getting them on this, uh, like it's a side profile. Um, you could play around with it. So I could have gone behind the woman and, um, you know, had that perspective of her, but I, I wanted to show the interaction at the market and, and show that transaction in a really upbeat, positive way. I think I mentioned this earlier, but ultimately with, with reels and with posts, we want to take people behind the scenes. You want to give them that entertainment or that information. And when you, when you take people behind the scenes, you're kind of giving them both. You're entertaining them and you're informing them about what you do and showing the care and the quality that goes into whatever it is that you make, produce, or do. So taking, you know, if you're promoting an event, um, show people, so Aaron, you know, if you're doing some photos for 4-H, show people what what goes in to setting it up show the cornell um, conference room loaded with signage or whatever it is before you go and set up because it's it's kind of it's personal it's behind the scenes it kind of feels it's interesting people don't see that unexpected angles that's another thing both with photos and video um it's it's just a way to give a different perspective. I always have, this is one of the photos I took, I think six or seven years ago, but I like it because it's, it's not a normal angle. We actually see the hand We're we're kind of like under the, I think I was squatting under the table to take this photo, but it's, it's interesting. And I remember it got a lot of, um, likes and, and comments. Um, uh, I don't remember what the post was that went with it, but it, it's just different. So tr play around with it. Think of a wedding photographer. I don't know if you've ever seen them. They always tend to wear black and try and 
thighed out, but if you ever watch them, they're all over the place. They're squatting, they're leaning, they're taking photos and videos at the weirdest angles. But that's why they're paid a lot of money is because it ends up looking really good and it's not boring to look at. So, so try and think of yourself as maybe like a photo ninja and <laughs> get on the ground and crouch down. Um, lines within your photos. So um, the person that does jewelry, you know, maybe you would um, put your necklaces, display them in a zigzag line. So anything that it, it literally draws the eye in when you have zigzags, because the, those lines, that rule of thirds that we talked about earlier, um, when you do zigzag lines, it's literally pulling the eye in and um, kind of pulling you into that grid. I'm a big fan of, yeah, the flat lay, the overhead shots. It's just, it's very visually pleasing and you can show a lot in, um, in the photo or video. Um, creating kind of a sense of wonder or, uh, you know, wondering what this is or what, what um, this one is for soap. So you could say, you know, what do you think? What do you think, um, you know, this smells like, or it kind of engage people with the question. And last but not least, just a couple legal things. Um, if you are taking photos of people, uh, always, and it's not a crowd shot, have a photo release form that people can sign, uh, especially if you plan on using the photos or videos in more than just a simple post. Like if you want to put it in a brochure or poster or something. Um, or a video that you think might have more shelf life, this can just protect you. But if it's just a quick video, you don't have it's something that, you know, you're just going to post, I would say it's not necessary. But um, if if it's, oh, and if it's a child, for sure, if it's anyone under 18, you definitely want to use uh, the photo release form for sure. And if, you know, the whole point of this was about um, taking your own photos and videos, but if you're putting graphics together and you want stock images that are, um, you know, safe to use and they're not, someone's not, you're not stealing someone's work, you can use Pixabay and Pexels.com because these sites, um, the photographer and the uh, videographer have released the rights. So they're saying anyone can use my images. Um, there are no rights to them. So it's safe. Never go and you know regram someone's image or go to Google Images and steal an image. It's just it's not ethical. So um, that is all I have for tonight. So um, we have a little bit of time if anyone wants to share. So <clears throat> and I'm just trying not to cough. <laughs> but anyway, um, if anyone has any. Um, tips that they've um, found useful, anything that um, they found is getting more views than other things that they're posting, any questions, any thoughts? I was going to say, I like your point with uh, using video and you're trying to get photos using video and then using a shot from that video. Yeah. Um, Especially in action it, scenes. Yeah, that's actually... You bring up a really good point, Linda. You can, um, it's really easy now to take stills from a video. So you could always um, take a video, take a one minute video, and then go back in and cut, cut in and steal the stills <clears throat> from that video. So that's another way. But yeah, I always say just grab is don't worry about worry about the composition. Remember those four elements, like what is the purpose? So what are you trying to do? What do you want as your subject? But then go ahead and take a lot of photos, step away, get closer, um, do those different angles. And then when you get back to your lab, you know, you sit down and play around with it and find out what works. Literally, you should have like hundreds of photos and videos. Mm -hmm from you know one session and then you're gonna use four. <laughs> Does anyone have any other questions or thoughts? You know, welcome to say it aloud or put in the chat. I don't have any questions, but thank you. I learned some things. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Thank I you. 
<laughs> I do have a question, Lindsay, yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah. Hi, it's it's Aaron. Hope you're doing hey. well. Yeah, um, hope you are too. Thanks. Um, but you had mentioned at one point um, that right now, uh, or as of right now, the trend might change, as they're always changing, yeah. um, that text uh, being layered on top of videos and on top of photos is kind of falling out of style um, and out of the algorithm. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I have two questions for this. Uh, my first one is, why do you think that is? Um, and my second question is, where do you, like, um, at CCE, a lot of the times uh, we do rely on text accompanying our yeah. videos and yeah. our photos. Because it's for events. It's for Exactly, events. Yeah. yeah. So my second question would be, you know, what would you recommend or what would you see working uh, well now that the algorithm is steering away from that? So I, I'm so glad you brought that up because it's not veering away from that with text overlays for video because they want, yep, um, animated text, so text that's moving. So um, if you are able to, and, and to plug next week in Canva, you can easily make the text animate so that it kind of looks like it's typing and it's moving along. Um, that's okay. It's more the you know, for a while it was, it was like a photo with like a catchphrase over it or, um, and it still kind of works, I would say for like CCE or like any, you know, municipal work, um, because it's, it's more informative. So I think it, you can get away with it more, but for like, if you're selling, um, jewelry, um, you know, it's it's going to look a little disingenuous. I think if you're basically that I think this is what I think, because there's no hard and fast rule that with text overlays on photos, it can look kind of salesy. And I think like Meta, they're trying to make everything look genuine and real. And um, even businesses, it should look like I just took a photo and posted it. I don't know if that makes sense. Like they, they don't want everything to look so things that look like they're selling something just don't get viewed as much. So I know like Melinda and I are working and we were just talking about this with another project is trying to just get more real photos. So we're, when we're promoting events, we want to promote the event flyer because it has all the info on it and post that on Instagram. But whenever we actually just post people, let's say for Zumba, instead of posting a Zumba flyer or, you know, the basic info on Instagram, if we're showing people doing Zumba with no text, it gets a lot, it gets a lot more traction. So, but video it is, okay. I, I mean, I am finding it's fine. In fact, I think that videos without text overlay are, are actually not getting shown as much because Meta and TikTok know that people don't view things with sound on that often. So it's almost the reverse for video. You do want overlays of, of, um, the word but with photos in static images you kind of don't unless you're in stories and stories is acceptable too and it seems like the video when you speak and then the text displays that yes. is, is one way to the effort to show up that yes it. yep so so text and video and I'm, I'm so glad you asked that question because I don't think I was clear it's more um some of those you know, like the image of the apples with the text on it. It's just not going to get as much traction lately. I'm, I'm finding, unfortunately. So, versus if you right put the photo on, then you put something over. Put it, it in the post. post yep. It. Yeah. Yep. But again, and another trick for that is, um, and I've been using this with um, actually the project I was working with Melinda on is if you put a series of images, and the first one on Instagram is just the photo, but then the other ones maybe have the text or the information. So Aaron, that's something if like a 4-H event for let's say pheasants, you, the first image would be of a pheasant maybe, but then, you know, Instagram, you can do up to 10 images. So maybe the other images, maybe some more pheasants, 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 but then, you know, you have your flyer or you have your more informative text there too. And that's just my personal opinion. That's what I'm finding and the, the algorithms change. The, the one time I do find that sometimes it's still going to get picked up is if it's a quote. So quotes still do well or something really beautiful, like a beautiful image. And, and the text just kind of is part of that image. I, um, I'm trying to think of an example I could mention or show. 
it's just you want to avoid that that image that I showed you of the patty pan squash with like the starburst, you know, coming out and saying like two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, because anything that looks like it could be too salesy, Instagram, Facebook, they're gonna they're gonna hide that because they don't want people to feel like when they're scrolling and scrolling that they're being sold to. Because their goal is to keep you on their platforms as long as they can. And the way to do inter- to do that is to entertain or inform, not sell. So I hope that made some sense. <laughs> Thank you. Does anyone Thank else you. have any questions or comments at all? Well, we'll give a, a quick, so next week we have the, the Canva class. And if you haven't already, uh, we're going to do an actual Canva demonstration during we're gonna the make a flyer, yeah, a flyer in a video. Yeah. So if you, if you can sign up for Canva prior to the class, it is free to sign up for the basic uh, level. That would be helpful um, as part of this part of the program. Anything else? Yeah. So um, what we'll do in Canva is, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll set up a brand in Canva so I can show you how to do that. And then um, we'll make a quick flyer and then make an actual video. Um, And then it'll be a real um, we'll do like the text overlay and everything. Uh, so it'll be a good example of, of um, kind of how to use that tool and, and create a video. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much, Lindsay. I'll give yep. you a, a clap. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and okay. thank you, everyone, um, Alicia, Rochelle, um, Tracy, everyone, Aaron, and um, anyone else that kind of chimed in. I, I always like to say it's like, uh, you know, I don't we're all in kind of in the middle of this happening right now. Things are changing. The Wes Anderson video that was so trendy, you know, a couple of days ago when I was putting this together is probably not trendy in a week. So things are changing quickly. And, and, um, you know, I'm just trying to share what I know now. With you. Okay. Well, thank you. And thank you for sharing your personal selfies. As a yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Well, thank you, everyone. And hopefully we'll see you next week and have a a good evening. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Bye.